5G deployments are moving to software centric architectures to support different requirements especially in the telecom market open ran or o ran solutions have many target deployment modes the open ran alliance or the o ran alliance is defining the different network architectures and the components that encompass them such as the ru or the radio unit the du or the distributed unit and cu the central unit one of the key interfaces is the front hall which connects the radio unit to the distributed unit oran specifies the low level split lls architecture for the physical layer in the frequency domain between the ru and the du this is a frequency domain interface and helps to reduce the load on the front hall for a massive mimo system the interface helps to reduce the load on the front hall as it would have scaled with the number of antennas in the system if it were in the time domain while with the lls front hall split this scales only with the number of spatial streams that it is designed for two or four for the non massive mimo systems and 16 or so for the massive mimo systems in this example we can see that the doubling of the data streams from 4 to 8 more than doubled the front hall throughput the increase of more than double is coming from the fact that in the front hall some of the control plane messaging needs to be done for beam forming if we had used time domain interface per antenna then the front hall would have been more than 8 times which scales with the number of antennas the lls front hall is defined with a protocol called ecp which is a frequency domain enhancement over the common public radio interface ecp the transport mechanism can be ethernet with ip udp encapsulation ecp headers and data content are the payload in these ethernet frames there are four main messages for the ecp protocol the c plane or the control plane the u plane or the user data plane and the s plane or the synchronization plane and a separate messaging protocol for the management which is the m plane since the lls split is in frequency domain the interface is defined on the basis of resource blocks or 12 tones and symbols data sections are the fundamental structure which identify the portions of the symbols and portions of resource blocks the c plane identifies these data sections defines them and tells the ru the operations that it needs to do for these data sections the iq data itself is sent on the u plane a typical resource block is shown here some tones are reserved for common reference signals some for csirs and some for the control and some for user data each of these signals would have some characteristics which would separate them for example different beams for different kinds of data crs may need broad beams to reach in all directions csirs and control may be using broad beam but of different characteristics hence data sections are created which have similar characteristics or patterns and behavior and they are numbered by the section id which is essentially a label for the blocks of data which will be processed in the ru here since the control region have similar transmission characteristics they have been clubbed into a single data section subsequent symbols may require different data sections for different user allocations over these symbols symbol 3 does not have any reference signal but the beam forming to be applied on user 1 and user 2 may be different and hence different sections would be needed to be defined data sections are sent in order of the symbols so section 2 then 9 then 3 and then a and so on and ari mask tells which tones in the resource block the beam forming pattern needs to be applied section 3 has an ari pattern for the data as 011011 so the beam forming weights is applied on the tones 1 2 4 5 and so on skipping over the tones 0 3 6 a complementary mask of 100 100 are used for cell reference or csirs and are applied a different beam forming maybe a broad beam if a particular c plane is not received are you implicitly assumes that it has to send nulls since it is the du which determines the behavior of the ru for downlink and uplink c plane describes the data sections for both the directions c plane messages have a predefined component the transport header defines 
a ECP packet for a particular RU and stream. The application header describes the overall IQ data region in terms of the symbols and the resource blocks. The data section within this are described in the section headers defined by the section ID. The data in the uplane would not be sent in full precision, which can vary from DU and the RU implementations of the physical layer, but instead in a compressed format. Commonly used format are block floating compression, which uses and compresses data using a common exponent over a set of 12 tones of an RB. The parameters for the compression is also described for both the DL and the UL in the C plane. Each section ID has beamforming definitions. In the ORAM, there are many methods for beamforming. RU self-identification based preloaded sequence in the management plane tells the DU about the beam which are preloaded in the RU and their characteristics. It helps in the beamforming method with index passing. Another option is downloaded beams, again using mplane. For a more dynamic and optimized performance, real-time beamforming coefficient weight transfer from the DU to the RU provides better optimized performance. The DU itself computes the beamforming weights based on channel information which it can obtain via SRS. We have C-plane and U-plane messages, but when are they sent from the DU to the RU? The C-plane defines the data sections for the complete slot and is required by the RU before the over-the-air operation of that symbol. So the DU sends the C-plane message ahead of the slot from the DU to the RU. And subsequently, the U-plane messages for the corresponding data sections of every symbol are sent serially over time over the slot one symbol at a time. Synchronized telecom networks need to maintain over-the-air timing at the antennas for every RU. The synchronization can be met with one among many options. They are all using Precision Timing Protocol PTP of the ITU 8275.1 standard to transfer the timing across the network. For direct connection between the DU and the RU, the DU obtains the timing and acts as a grandmaster for the RU. The DU could have obtained the timing from any source. GNSS or PTP. The next configuration is like the first where there are multiple switching hops supporting boundary clocks between the DU and the RU. In the third option, both DU and RU obtain timing from a grandmaster in the network. Front hall interface is neither synchronous nor a perfect interface. It has variations. Delay management refers to the practice of a DU and RU sending and receiving information at the correct time. This time is determined by the processing time and the received buffer memory at the DU and the RU, as well as the transport delays. ORAN does not specify the timing or constraints for these, but it does specify how to send and receive based on these factors. For downlink, there is an absolute time at which data must be transmitted from the RU. Each RU has a fixed processing time and memory for storing the incoming packets on the front hall. So working backwards, DU must send the packet sufficiently ahead of time to allow for the network latency and jitter and processing at the RU. However, DU should not send this information too early to avoid overflow of the buffers in the RU. For uplink, there is no strict timing requirement. However, after the RU has done its processing, the data packets should be sent early enough so that the DU can close the heart loop and other processing timing restrictions imposed by higher layers and possibly the data processing for coordinated or joint reception. Not all uplane data is delay managed. Some of the data by the virtue of the content is sent in best effort and are identified by their stream ID. It may be acceptable to send and receive IQ data in priority in timely fashion, but for some data like sounding channel, having a large amount of data they can be sent interspersed over a larger duration to keep the throughput low. And it does not have to meet strict processing timing requirements. We have seen some of the aspects of the critical interface of the open RAM, the front hall, and how it operates. Until next time, from the edge.